We have been uh, this week turning our attention to Judges chapter 16. And um, on Monday, Tuesday, kind of got into this discussion about Samson and some of the details of his life, his birth and then his life. We've come to this chapter, of course, because this is the climax of his life. He, you know, Neil, one of the lessons we got, we got to glean from this, folks, as we visit this chapter and look at Samson. Carnal living has a high price tag. You know, Samson was a man who God had his hand on him. There's no denying this. He was a judge of Israel. He wasn't an atheist. He wasn't an unbeliever. He wasn't somebody that knew nothing about the Lord. Um, He had been set apart to the Lord from his birth. And I think he had a faith in the living God. I I don't doubt that. But uh, Samson is the ultimate example of what carnal living will do to you. The man did not honor the uh, Nazarite vow, the, you know, his separation unto the Lord. He didn't honor it. Now, you and I don't have to take a Nazarite vow today. Uh, that was a specific uh, uh, action on the part of Old Testament believers where they, they would uh, set their self apart to the Lord in a special way. But what we need to glean from this is we're all to be set apart to the Lord. And you and I are to walk with the Lord. We've got to put off the old man and put on the new man. That's New Testament language. Mm-hmm. We're to walk in the spirit. We're not to be dominated by the flesh. Carnal living means you are dominated by the flesh. You, you're going down the wrong path. Uh, you know, we justify these kind of things, Neil. We start living sloppy Christian lives. We're not growing. We're not uh, abounding more and more. Sometimes uh, we even shrink back from what the Lord has taught us. And we, we once were obedient in certain areas of our walk. Now we're disobedient. Well, let me tell you something. Your carnal living is going to cost you big time. And it will manifest in time. It doesn't manifest all in one week, one month. But if you persist, you're going to be in big trouble. Samson never got his act cleaned up. And he's got his head now laying in the lap of this woman named Delilah. Who doesn't love him? Neil, uh, what am I missing? She doesn't love this man. No, no. Uh, they obviously have some sort of relationship. Right. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think we mentioned yesterday, I don't know why he would stick around when <laughs> three times she's asked him the source of his strength. Yeah. And when he does wake up, there's other men there ready to like take him out. Uh, I think that's when we'd part ways after the first time, personally. <laughs> hey, man, that. Well, folks, uh, we need to open our eyes to realities. You know, the Lord does speak to us through our circumstances at times. And um, man, pay attention. Uh, Samson might should have been paying attention to what was going on. Doesn't seem like he was, I don't know, you think he just had a false sense of security somehow. He knew, wow, this is meaningless. I can play with this. Uh, I don't know. But uh, he was in the wrong place with the wrong person and he was not yielded to the Lord the way he should have been. Right, yeah, and maybe it was the victories he'd seen in the past. I don't know. It'd been a, you know he'd been living not right for quite some time, apparently, and uh, so just <laughs> did, didn't give any regard to it. Yeah. Well, can we learn this well today? You are a disciple of Jesus Christ. I don't care if you're 16 or 60, uh, 17 or 70, or what, 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 what's the age? You, you're following the Lord Jesus. Learn this well carnal living has a high price tag be filled with the spirit yield your life as a believer to christ walk in obedience to him be separated unto the lord you know when you obey the lord it just naturally separates you from the world you don't have to have a to-do list so i'm not going to go here and do this no just follow the lord and all of a sudden you say yeah i'm not going that way i'm going this way it's not it's not so much a checklist it's you're obeying the Lord. And as you read his word, as you hear it preached and taught, then let the word of God have its sanctifying effect in your life. Set you apart. Now, if you don't, just get ready for maybe a shorter life. Samson didn't live out his natural days. Mm-hmm. Get ready for a troubled life because sin always troubles your life. And it doesn't mean it's the end of the story, but who wants the trouble? Neil, I'd much rather live a spirit-filled life and be blessed, which, you know, that's been my focus all these years. I don't intend to change. I'd much rather do that uh, than to 
create myself a batch of trouble because I didn't want to obey the Lord. Yeah, I mean, we see it all over our culture, whether that's unfortunately in the church or outside of the church. Amen. There are people who we don't, we start doing things our own way, doing what's right in our own eyes, as judges would say. And uh, it leads us somewhere where we never intended to be, but we never uh, actively pursued the will and the mind of God in order to not wind up there. Yeah. Well, I tell you what we'll do, uh, Neil, if you could read verses 15 through 18, we'll just uh, continue through the chapter and pick it up there as we conclude tomorrow. But uh, go ahead and read those verses. It said, And she said unto him, How canst thou say, I love thee, when thine heart is not with me? Thou hast mocked me these three times, and hast not told me wherein thy great strength lieth. And it came to pass, when she pressed him daily with her words, and urged him, so that his soul was vexed unto death, that he told her all his heart, and said unto her, there, had not, there hath not come a razor upon mine head, for I have been a Nazarite unto God from my mother's womb. If I be shaven, then my strength will go from me, and I shall become weak and be like any other man. Wow. And when Delilah saw that he had told her all his heart, she sent and called for the lords of the Philistines, saying, Come up this once, for he hath showed me all his heart. Then the lords of the Philistines came up unto her and brought money in their hand. There you go. Uh, you know, folks, it's interesting. Uh, Delilah presses Samson and she says, How canst thou say I love thee? Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he should have flipped that on her, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, this thing goes both ways. Right. I, yeah, you need to be like, well, how can you say you love me? You just sent men to attack me three times. <laughs> wow. But you notice that uh, she pressed him daily. So just keep in mind, Samson's in the wrong place with the wrong person. And he keeps getting this pressure to compromise, compromise. Tell me, what's the secret of your strength? Tell me. Well, this is kind of the nature of any kind of temptation. If you're in the wrong place, generally with the wrong people, and you get pressed long enough, you're going to fall. I don't care. Oh, no, not me. Yes, you. Don't deceive yourself, friend. The way to victory is to not, Jesus said, pray, lead us not into temptation. And that means deliver me, Lord, for that place where I can enter into a place of weakness. Mm -hmm. Deliver me from temptation. You don't hang out with it. You don't put your arm around it. You don't let the enemy press you daily until you fall. Good lesson. Well, we'll pick it up there tomorrow as we conclude. God bless you until then.